All right, looks like we are live here. So good morning. I'm just checking here. Uh, yeah, it says it has a excellent connection, uh, which is, I guess, a little bit rare for this, uh, uh, my internet situation. But um, yeah, it looks like it's going live now. So uh, how are you all doing this morning? Uh, middle of the week or not quite yet, but uh, just getting started with the week, hopefully for everybody. Uh, as you can see, I switched up uh, the background a little bit here. Um, got a new desk, basically, uh, to free up some space in my apartment here. So flipped it, uh, and now got the shades behind me. Uh, so yeah, um, basically, uh, the background's going to be a little bit different. Um, also, I think the lighting is slightly different. Um a little bit more shade on one side than the other, but eh, uh, I'll probably be getting a uh, like a ring light or something like that here in the next week, uh, along with the uh, Dogecoin shirt coming in the mail. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we'll have everything set up looking a little bit better here. Uh, but yeah, uh, good morning. Hopefully everything is going well for you uh, and everybody in the crypto world out there. I think, I don't know how many of you guys um, who watch this show are actually you know, use Twitter or Reddit to check on, you know, what's going on in the crypto world. But basically, because the price of Bitcoin is going sideways right now, uh, and there's not much new news. Good morning, Vincent. I um, hope you're doing well. And um, yeah, from our chat the other day, um, help me kind of think of this subject for today for mining. So uh, soak it in. Uh, we'll get into the deets uh, and you'll get all the information that you need to start uh, mining cryptocurrency. Uh, and it should take, you know, uh, only a day or two uh, to get your situa situation set up, no matter what type of computer uh, that you have. So, um, but yeah, everything in the crypto sphere right now is kind of slow because Bitcoin's just kind of moving sideways and there's no new news, not, not much interesting stuff going on except the fact that uh, Binance uh, just delisted. Uh, <laughs> here, body and mind, right? Body and mind, Vincent. Um, but Binance just delisted uh, Bitcoin SV, the Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, um, which we had looked at as our coin of the day towards the end of last week. And I had mentioned on that show, um, it's probably the worst coin out there, uh, simply because it is run by a guy who is pretty much a fraud, uh, in Craig Wright. So because Binance did that, a few other exchanges, or at least one other exchange followed suit. Um, but uh, the news is so slow, all on crypto Twitter and Reddit and everything. The only stuff out there is just bashing Craig Wright, which, you know, is fair enough because, you know, he's just spouting BS all over the crypto sphere. He's just saying, I'm Satoshi, I'm Satoshi for the last, you know, however many years. So, you know, he's kind of getting what he deserves, basically. Uh, yeah, wait, so John, I just mentioned at the beginning here, I flipped, uh, towards my window here. So you just got the curtains in the background, um, this time around because I got a new desk, uh, to free up some space. I was using like, uh, uh, my kitchen table kind of thing that I had here, which was really large. And, um, so I just switched it up, got a new desk, um, which freed up some space, uh, and then going to rearrange, uh, the apartment here. Uh, over the next week or so. Uh, but yeah, so doing some spring cleaning, basically. But yeah, so Craig Wright is basically the only thing going on in the cryptosphere right now. Everybody's just bashing him. Uh, so yeah, I figured, you know, that's not really, that's a, something that I should mention because that's what's going on. But we already basically talked about Bitcoin SV last week. I think it was on Thursday or something about how terrible of a coin it is, worse than Tron, as Waze John says. And so, yeah, it's kind of, there's just no news going on for most of these, um, you know, things. And then also Bitcoin price is just kind of stagnating right now or stalling out maybe. Um, so, yeah, uh, I didn't want to do a whole show on why Craig Wright's, you know, a douche or whatever, like, you know, a lot of other people are kind of focusing on right now. Instead, um, you know, take these kind of lulls in the market to, uh, you know, shove some new information in your mind. I think when the price of Bitcoin is not going too crazy, you can kind of sit back, relax, uh, and understand what's going on 
uh, you know, in the background of cryptocurrencies. And so that's what we're going to do today with um, how to mine cryptocurrency. And we're going to mine or we're going to show you how to mine coins that you can mine on a normal laptop, uh, on a CPU, GPU um, that you probably most people will have access to. So it's not overly complicated. I'll keep it as basic as possible and just give you all the sites and information you need then to troubleshoot and do this yourself if you have the interest in mining. But if, even if you don't go ahead and act on this information and you just want to understand kind of what does it look like when somebody is mining uh, and how does that, you know, how, how hard or how easy is it to kind of get started with that, um, we'll go over the basics here. Um, as I've said, previously in this show mining you know of course there are four ways to get to cryptocurrency one is to mine it uh, two is to buy it three is to sell and trade it and then four uh, is to earn it and number four is probably the one that's the least uh you know common out there at the moment um mining is becoming less and less useful because uh for most of these cryptocurrencies to get the return on investment in terms of electricity you have to do you either have to have free electricity or you have to have a really uh, souped up computer so um yeah you know uh, most people don't have one of those uh, if you have both then mine mine a lot of stuff as much as you can um but yeah so most people are buying or buying and selling and trading um to earn cryptocurrency um probably for the next you know foreseeable future for the next few years um so, but I think it is important to understand mining and the basics of it, like what it is, um, why it's useful, how it affects, you know, cryptocurrencies. So we're going to change the format a little bit today. We're going to start with, of course, the meme of the day, um, which is uh, a little meme on sexy shit coins. Uh, so you got to see it to, to understand it. And then we'll go into the uh, price action of Bitcoin, which isn't doing too much. And then we'll go into the coin of the day because the coin that I'm going to show you or the group of coins that I'm going to show you um, that are easiest to mine are related to Monero, um, which is a privacy coin, which has a lot of other coins related to it that you can also choose to mine um, on a basic computer. So I'll do the coin of the day first so you understand what Monero is. And then we'll go into the topic of uh, mining for uh, the last part. And um, yeah, we'll take as much time as we need. I don't see it going too long, but let's just go with the flow and see how it goes. So with no further ado, let's jump into the meme of the day. So here uh, we're using Crypto Chimps tweets again because uh, that guy's a legend. He just, you know, puts out really good tweets. So um, it's a little bit of a forewarning here. <laughs> yeah, Monero drug coin, exactly. Uh, that's very much part of its history, and we'll get into that. But yeah, uh, you know, some of these shit coins, you know, a lot of people in the bull run of 2017, you know, they saw all these shit coins. Uh, <laughs> I mean, privacy coin, exactly. So uh, a lot of people saw all these shit coins, everything like, you know, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin uh, Satoshi Vision, and stuff like that. Of course, Satoshi Vision wasn't out during the bull market. But, anyways, you know, a lot of people saw a lot of the old coins, a lot of the shit coins, and they just, you know, were like, hmm, those things look too good to resist. Uh, and so that's kind of the subject of the meme of the day. You know, are people going to fall into the same trap again uh, in 2019? So uh, I think I have the desktop volume on here. So let's just roll up the film. So yeah, the base, you know, uh, you might not be able to catch all of the words that pop up on the screen there. And if you want to go to crypto chimps thing, yeah, exactly. Baited into those uh, sexy shit coins with nice double bottoms, basically. If you don't know what the double bottom pattern is, obviously, besides, uh, you know, a nice looking butt, uh, a double bottom is on the chart where it hits the bottom once and goes down again. And that's a good thing because then those generally go into bullish, you know, um, situations which people like um so yeah uh good morning uh, or actually i should say good good evening uh, mld uh 
nice stream. Thank you very much. Um, you just missed the double bottoms. We had some sexy shit coins shown here on uh, Crypto Chimps thing, but you can check it out on his Twitter. Um, but yeah, so uh, watch out for those double bottoms on some of those coins, because even though we're in 2019 and things look to be more bullish here, you know, uh, the altcoins will always be boom and bust. So do be careful, uh, as Crypto Chimp uh, so wisely puts out in this uh, meme of the day. So uh, that being said, let's move into the price action of Bitcoin. Like I said, um, you know, we usually have, uh, you know, days where Bitcoin's going crazy, and then we have days where uh, Bitcoin's doing absolutely nothing. And which what I said yesterday was, if we broke below 5,100 or definitely below 5,000 with a lot of volume on the bottom, um, which we're not getting a lot of selling volume down here. Um, but if we were to see a lot of volume then, um, and the price dipped below that price, then things would start to look negative. Um, but right now we're just kind of chopping sideways. We're not bullish. We're not uh, we're not bearish yet in terms of where it's going next. Um, but right now, I'm going to once again review um, the long, uh, sorry, like the uh, long term, medium term, and short term, um, which will give everybody who's maybe new or whatever um, an idea of where we're going here. So, just a reminder from the end of 2017 until the end of 2018, um, we looked. It uh, looks like we have finished the ABC correction of a large wave three going into a wave, Elliott wave five, which is the final wave in the first, this first pattern here that started back when in 2011. So um, why is that important? Because, well, if we're starting this new, this next new wave one, then we can divide that up into five subwaves um, as we're doing with each one of these. Because um, remember, Elliott waves are kind of like Russian dolls. You know, you got the main one with a smaller one, smaller one, smaller, smaller one, uh, all nested inside of each other um, down to from, you know, the monthly and yearly marks all the way down into the daily and the minute mark. So we're looking here at weekly candles. And so if we're in this wave one and it has not yet completed, then we have potential to still move up to just under 6,000 um, before making that major correction, which everybody is looking for. I think everybody right now is looking for this correction um, and maybe thinking that, oh, wave one is finished. I'm not so sure about that. So that's why I'm talking about uh, this bullish count. If December was truly the end of the bear market. So, and also remember this wave two can also retrace to almost near the beginning of wave one. So anywhere between 3,600 and 4,600, probably around 4,200 is likely. Um, once we do get that correction, um, whether it happens starting, it's already starting or um, it hasn't yet started, we still have some up room to go. That's the, that's the question on everybody's mind right now. So if we are still moving up, what would we see? So, um, Let's just kind of clean this up a little bit. I know it's a little bit messy, but so that's the big wave one that we're in. And then looking here, subwaves one, two, three, four, five, this green line here, we're in the wave one. So that started at the end of uh, the bear market in December, if that's the case. Then we have the one, two, three, four, and five. And five could pro end somewhere uh, between, you know, uh, the 6,000 marker roughly. So if we're still in this wave three, we have to divide that again in like the Russian doll scenario, um, divide that by five waves, as I mentioned yesterday. And so it looks like wave three yesterday, I had wave three ending here and then wave four potentially already having ended. And then we would need to see some impulse, but we didn't see any impulse. We've just been going sideways. We didn't break below, so we're not turning over yet either. So. Wave four, I don't think is over yet. And I think wave three makes more sense up here because wave three is also divided by five waves. You could go one, two, three, four, and five being here. Um, so yeah. Then um, if this is the case and wave four then needs to be divided into an ABC before we get this wave five up to 5,800, 
um, then we would have something like this. And I here I put it on the four hour chart, which we can see more closely. So if that's the top of the wave three going down to the bottom of the wave four before we hit back up here, what do we need to see? Well, we need to see an A, B, and C correction. And in the C, we also need to see an A, B, and a C. So if the C part of this, uh, the A, B, C part of this uh, C correction is going to go down, then I would say uh, I also put this channel here. Um, so, you know, within the next maybe half a day or so, maybe we get up to, you know, 50, 80 or something like that, and then we break down. Um, how far? Uh, you know, not that much further down than uh, the B wave here, so, or the end of the A. So I would say, you know, 4,900s, but it looks like above 5,000, uh, Bitcoin is still relatively, you know, has some pretty good support at 5,000. Um, so maybe we, you know, quickly go below 5,000 to like 4,950. And then from there, if this is the case, we would then from there start uh, need to start seeing uh, some better volume um, to then start this wave five. If that is not the case, we and we break 5,000 and especially break 4,900, then we see a lot of selling volume. If that happens, then this channel here could be something that we stay in for a little bit and kind of bounce between. Um, but personally, I'm still feeling like this bullish count still has some possibility. I think we'll go sideways here for a little bit and then um, let's look for that wave up. So that's the probability. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, you know, uh, saying this is exactly what's going to happen, but this is just, you know, uh, based on the information we have. Uh, the educated guest. So, oh, MLD's uh, hitting up the the chat here. So, Russian dolls. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can take that any way you want it. Um, <laughs> but um, oh, you lost the feed for a second. That's not good. Uh, it says it's going on my end. So yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's your show now. Well, you're you're the moderator, so uh, you can kick anybody out. Good morning, Cody. Nice to see you in here. And uh, yeah, just you know, hit up hit up all the uh, the stuff uh, in the chat. No worries there. But yeah, so that's the price of Bitcoin. That's where we're going uh, potentially. Um, but what do we need to see? Well, we need to start seeing that volume up after we finish this wave four here. So probably not for another day or so. Um, here it says like the seventeenth could be over here towards you know the eighteenth as well, but. Um, definitely within this week, we will see which way to, uh, Bitcoin decides to go, but definitely has strong support at 5,000. So no need to freak out and start um, you know, selling or buying too much actually at this point. Once we do see confirmation of the next direction, um, then you start to make moves, but you want to wait to make moves until you have a confirmation. So that's it on the price. So for the next part of the show, um, we're going to get deep, well, not deep, we're going to get into how to mine cryptocurrency, specifically looking at Monero, uh, which <laughs> I like wasted John's comments before, uh, you know, hashtag drug coin, uh, I, I mean, privacy coin. Um, yeah, you know, whatever. Uh, I like freedom of speech. I like freedom of um, being able to, you know, partake in um, different parts of society, I, I should say. Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, basically, you know, if you want to do that, you know, go ahead and do that. Just don't do anything. All right, what about now? My back end says we're good and going again. We're back! <laughs> this, yeah, this happened to me one one other time. Uh, perfect, good, good, good. Yeah, I wasn't, I think you guys are on like a 40 second delay. Um, but, <laughs> perfect. 
Um, so yeah, it happened to me one other time, I think towards the beginning of this show. So the internet doesn't like me sometimes, you know, uh, but you guys do. So appreciate it. <laughs> but anyways, um, hopefully it doesn't cut this up into a couple different videos, but at least the live streams going and we, uh, in the chat is going. And I think that's really all we need, um, to make sure this thing's going. So where I was going in the next part was, okay, um, Monero. Yeah, it might be used for illicit things. It might be used for uh, other things. But I think, you know, Edward Snowden mentioned, um, you know, a lot of people say, uh, no, it is not yet Vincent Vale. Um, but basically, um, Edward Snowden was talking about, you know, uh, people who say they don't want freedom of speech just have nothing to say. It's the same, um, you know, with uh, freedom of privacy. Um, means if you don't want freedom of privacy, it means you have nothing to hide, um, which is just ridiculous. Um, everybody should have some state of you know privacy as it relates to the government. So things like Alexa, inviting IoT into your home, uh, those things tend to be mini wiretaps, right? So um, we're going to get into Monero, which will I'll show you why it's interesting, why it's a great coin, and then how to start mining um, because you can use it or you can mine it on basically any computer. So first, let's go over to uh, the coin market cap. So on coin market cap, uh, we got Monero here at number 12. So out of all 2000 cryptocurrencies, it's number 12 and it's about 65 bucks right now. So not bad, not bad. Um, you know, higher than Bitcoin SV, which got dropped off of Binance today. So uh, it's doing it's doing good. Um, Binance coin is a bit doing a bit better. But anyways, um, that's where it's at. Then uh, same with any coin of the day. We want to look at what's its purpose, who's behind it, um, what are the technicals, uh, what are the financials, and then what is the community like? So what is Monero? I think most of you guys probably know uh, that it is a private, secure, and untraceable cryptocurrency. And how do we know it's untraceable? Well, uh, like Wasted John mentioned before, it has been used for a lot of different things, including potentially, you know, drugs and stuff uh, in the past on the dark web. And a lot of people did that uh, and were untraced. So um, it successfully, you know, uh, has done that, um, which is, you know, something that's very different than Bitcoin. And so it was launched in 2014. And uh, this means you are completely in control of your funds and privacy of those funds. So no one else can see uh, your balances or transactions. So this, you know, is kind of the ultimate in cryptocurrency, just the ultimate freedom. Um, you can have your money, you can hold it yourself, Nobody can tell you where to use it, how to use it. Um, nobody can see how much you have. Um, it's just probably the best overall, uh, you know, use cases or purposes for having a cryptocurrency. Um, privacy is huge. Bitcoin, you you know, kind of has uh, the ability to be private but it's not built in like it is in Monero. So that's the main difference there. Um, so that's pretty cool. I think uh, that use case is extremely important. Um, so um, that's the basics of that. So, okay, then what is Monero? Uh, that's not the screen I wanna go to. So basically, if we then go into um, Wikipedia, Wikipedia is our friend, um, gives us the basic information. Uh, so like I said, it's, focuses on privacy, decentralization, fungibility, um, and a public ledger, which is basically, here it uses the word ob obfuscated, uh, but basically, yeah, you can't see who owns what. Um, so you can broad broadcast and send transactions um, with no outside observers being able to see uh, who's at the source and where is the destination. It uses a proof of work very similar to Bitcoin, but who made this, right? Um, so before we get into the technicals, we, we looked at its purpose, but we want to know who made Monero. And well, if you go to the history here, 
Um, there's a few different things about it, but uh, da, 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 da. yeah, the name wasn't in here, but I put it up on this other page. Um, so Crypto Note, um, you can see, where is it here? The white paper uh, over here, you can see is this protocol called Crypto Note. So Monero comes from a coin called Bytecoin, which is not a fork of Bitcoin. It's actually a whole new cryptocurrency, which also has this privacy feature um, put in. And it was made on this crypto note protocol. So not the Bitcoin protocol. Um, so it's a completely different, uh, is a cryptocurrency, which has a lot of similarities, but a completely different algorithm, which it is based on. So in order to understand who made Monero, we have to understand who made crypto note. So crypto note, um, is just an application layer protocol um, to solve some problems that Bitcoin did not. Uh, and this is mainly decentralized privacy. And nothing is known about the original author of CryptoNote, who apparently is named Nic Nicholas von Soberhagen, <laughs> which sounds hilarious, but it's basically another version of Satoshi Nakamoto. So a pen name, maybe of a group, here um, on this Stack Exchange website, somebody asked, uh, what is known about Nicholas von Sa Saberhagen? <laughs> Which every time I say it just sounds funny. Uh, so, you know, he made the crypto note white paper, but, you know, that birthed a lot of these privacy coins. But uh, who is he? Um, so basically, uh, the answer here is we don't have any idea. He's basically like Satoshi Nakamoto. There's a couple theories. One some of the creators of technology behind Bitcoin, like Adam Back, Nick Zosbo, uh, or Satoshi Nakamoto, or the group of people who are Satoshi Nakamoto, may have, you know, after Bitcoin made uh, Monero as, you know, a more privacy focused version of Bitcoin, um, but with a different protocol, um, which is the crypto note. Um, but there's another theory, which is interesting, which is Stanford, um, has a Bitcoin group because Stanford University has a lot of research into cryptocurrency and blockchain. Um, and so uh, they have a possible involvement in the making of this protocol because before the protocol was released, the, the domain cryptonote.org was hosted uh, by an encrypted message application named Cryptonote. And this application called Cryptonote, which is not the protocol, but is uh, has the same name, um, was developed by the members of the Stanford Bitcoin group. So I think that sounds pretty, you know, convincing or pretty uh, logical. So they were making the, they were making this idea of the CryptoNote protocol. They got CryptoNote.org, which was hosted for this application called CryptoNote, which then potentially was not linked directly to the CryptoNote protocol. But um, it seems like those guys are really, really smart. Um, they know a lot about Bitcoin. They know a lot about blockchain. So I, it's not a big stretch of the imagination that they made some stupid pen name, um, you know, Nicholas von Soberhagen, uh, and made this crypto note protocol and then started making or having other people make with open source software, a variety of coins based on this protocol. So the first coin on this protocol, so Bytecoin is the first crypto note based cryptocurrency. So here... Um, you can see this type of anonymous transaction makes it impossible to find the sender or receiver um, through these things called ring signatures. Um, so yeah, this was the first one. And then Monero was forked off of Bytecoin and then a lot of other coins were forked off of that. So that is how we come to you know who made Monero. So it's basically, we don't know. Um, which is perfect because it's a privacy coin. So um, actually, that's a good thing. Then if we get into the technicals of Monero, just very, you know, kind of glaze over the top. So the crypto note protocol um, is similar to the Bitcoin uh, protocol. The main difference is that it has privacy embedded in it. Um, so you can't see the sender or receiver of the funds or how many, how much uh, funds people hold in their wallets because it completely, through ring signatures, it completely... Uh, hides that information. And so the one thing which I think is difficult about Monero 
is that we see there's a circulating supply of 16 million, but I'm not sure if there's a cap on the, like a limit of the supply. You might be able to mine this stuff forever. I didn't find any information on when, you know, it will finish mining. So that would be one main difference from Bitcoin and actually would make sense to me because the price of Monero um, does not go nearly as high as other cryptocurrencies. And that might be because it's not meant as a currency which you invest in and then the value continues to rise, which it probably will anyways. It's more for the use of privacy. And also the block time is two minutes, so it's relatively fast. It's very decentralized. Um, so the technicals, it's a, it's a pretty good coin, you know, for the use of privacy. Um, so that's the basics of Monero. Then we want to look at the uh, financials. So basically on the coin market cap, there's a market cap of $1 billion. So a lot of people are using it um, actively every day. Um, like I said, there's no max supply. So don't expect to get rich on Monero. Um, the all-time high was $500. The all-time low was about $0.21 cents, uh, when it was put on exchanges. Um, so it's not as volatile as other cryptocurrencies in terms of U.S. dollar uh, value. Um, so it's relatively stable. And you can see here on the chart of its history, it was largely around you know 10 or even less than a, a penny. And then, oops. And then the Bitcoin bull run, all the shit coins or altcoins, you know, with the double bottoms, uh, the sexy double bottoms went up like crazy. Monero did not go up quite as high. It went up to, you know, 400 some bucks and then it's come crashing down, but it found its low around 40 bucks or so. So in the next bull run, who knows where it could go. So, you know, on a side bet, it might be good, but we're looking at it mainly for mining, um, not for profits um, to understand how uh, cryptocurrencies work. So it is on a lot of different exchanges. So, uh, I mean, holy crap, actually, that's a lot. That's like 125 different trading pairs over a variety of exchanges. So Monero is very popular. It's very used. Um, the community also behind it is huge, which we'll see um, with a lot of these uh, different types of coins um, that we can mine with it uh, or with the Monero uh, technology. Um, so let's see. Uh, yeah, freedom. Yeah, I just saw the Braveheart quote. Yeah, exactly. Freedom, freedom, freedom. I'll have to make a meme on that, actually. That's a, that's a good idea. Um, freedom for all, freedom from oppression. Um, so that's it on the technicals and where Monero com comes from. Also, why it is different. Um, it's secure. It's private. It's untraceable. It's fungible, meaning you can exchange it for other items of value or the same value, just like gold. Um, and that's mainly it there. So now we want to get into how to mine Monero or any other coin that is related to the crypto note protocol, um, which I explained it gives Monero these, you know, uh, secure private properties, um, but is also somewhat similar to Bitcoin. But you can, a lot of these coins, which fork off of Bitcoin and Monero, um, they can decide to keep some aspects or change some aspects um, into whatever type of coin that they want. So if you go to this website here, this will be um, the first place that you look um, when you want to start mining Monero or a Monero based currency. Um, so this thing here, XMR stack. So I forgot to mention um, that the ticker symbol for Monero is XMR. So if you just Google XMR stack and you go and you find this GitHub link from, from this uh, person named uh, FireIce-UK, um, this person put on GitHub the open source software in order to run and mine uh, coins related to the crypto note protocol. So here you can see uh, this Monero stack application uh, is a Kryptonite all-in-one mining software. Uh, so what does that mean? Um, basically, it means this miner supports CPUs, AMD, and NVIDIA GPUs. Um, so you can use your uh, CPU or GPU. Normally with a laptop, it's a little bit slow, but you can still do it. Your fan might kind of go, Wee! and you know, sound like uh, it's going crazy. Um, but you can mine cryptocurrencies like uh, Monero, Eon, 
and all of these other crypto night coins which are um related to the crypto note protocol um so you can see this video guide here um a monero stack um, basic setup um on how to do it so they have the youtube guide here and this is for you know how to do it on windows and then it just mentions here here are some of the supported altcoins um that are you know using this miner um so it has BitTube, Graft, Haven, all of these things, TurtleCoin, Zcash, or sorry, Xcash. Um, if you look on this website, HashVault.pro, um, you can see the different crypto note mining pools, but also just which coins um, people are mining. So you can see on Monero, there's about 787 miners active right now. Um, on Graft mining, there's about 300. Uh, on Turtle Mining Pool, there's about 230. Um, on Loki Mining Pool, which is also one of these coins, there's 185. So there's a bunch of these random coins that are probably never going to be worth anything much, you know, uh, except for Monero um, because everybody knows it. Um, but these are just kind of experiments that people are playing with. So if you want to understand and look under the hood, um, these are just the different types of coins that you can do. So if you go to this... Uh, Monero stack on GitHub um, by our Fire Ice UK, then you can start. Um, you basically download the application for um, XMR stack and then begin mining. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this coin, this coin, Turtle Coin, as an example because their community will help you uh, with any troubleshooting if you have any problems while mining. Um, so um, we basically talked about what Monero is, uh, what type of coins you can mine, what mining application you need to download, which is XMR stack. And now we want to go to, okay, then how do you actually start mining? So if we choose this coin, just randomly turtle coin, um, the reason why I chose this is twofold. It's a meme coin. Uh, so it's, it's in it for the memes, uh, as well. Cause you can see it's at, uh, turtle coin dot L O L. <laughs> so it doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, but also, if you go down to the bottom of their homepage, they have a Discord and GitHub, so you can follow all of their directions, actually talk to the developers um, who will help you with your problems if you have any trouble when you are mining. So, um, first of all, how do you mine? Well, um, here you can look at the TurtleCoin wiki on GitHub. So this just explains what is TurtleCoin. Um, it's part of you know uh, the crypto note currencies. Um, and a quick navigation, you can read about it, how to set up a wallet, how to mine TurtleCoin, which is what we're going to look at, and then how to contribute to the community. So we want to look at this part here, how to mine a step-by-step -step guide to mining TurtleCoin, um, which is a fork of Monero. Um, so again, it's, it talks about what it is, um, how to set up a wallet, and then how to mine. So then click here on this guide, um, right? How to, an in-depth guide on how to mine turtle coin. Just press that guide there. Then, okay, we finally get to what we're looking for: how to mine turtle coin. Um, so um, you can use different applications. So their number one they recommend, which is the one first one I showed you, was Monero Stack XMR Stack. You can also do this thing, which is an also a Monero application miner, uh, XM uh, rig. Um, you can do cloud mining, Raspberry Pi mining, mobile mining. Um, but the easiest thing is just the to follow the XMR stack. So if you press um, the this guide on how to start mining Turtle Coin with XMR stack, then it brings you to this page here. So an XMR stack guide, how to set it up, um, and uh, what it is. Um, so it's a unified miner, meaning it can mine several different types of cryptocurrencies on your CPU and GPU on a normal computer. Um, so you have to download and install it for Windows. If you have a Mac, they also have how to do that, and for Linux as well. And let me just double check. Okay, good, good, good. So um, what do you need to do? So first you need to download and install the Monero, uh, Monero Stack uni Unified Miner. Um, so it'll auto detect your hardware. Um, so how do you do that? Um, 
So if you press that there, it'll bring you back uh, here. And then uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Basically, also, if you go to this uh, Monero stack guide here, um, it'll basically tell you how to download uh, the Monero stack um, application. So follow this uh, in information on this website, and that'll probably be the easiest place. So first, download install that. That's just like uh, similar to if you're to download any other application from the internet. Um, it'll download like a zip file um, to your desktop or to your downloads. And then uh, after you've downloaded that, then you just make a special folder called the Turtle Coin Miner on your desktop, and then you unzip uh, all the files um, there. And then you double click on the application within those files, which will then be the uh, XMR stack.exe, which is just the file of the application which you just downloaded. Um, so pretty simple. Um, one thing which I do want to add is, You probably went dark there for a second because I'm going to add actually a picture of what it looks like once you start doing this. So hold on just a second here, guys. I forgot to put this picture on here before the beginning of the show. There. All right. So um, back to it. So basically, you double click on that application and then you want to start, um, you know, using it. Um, so you can open up the command prompt. And the reason why I made that new scene here is because I just show you what a command prompt looks like um, in your search bar, um, you know, at the bottom by your Windows uh, start button. Um, you can just type in the command prompt and this is the only technical thing you'll actually have to do which will be probably a new skill for most people because also i am not a coder i don't know how to code anything um, but um, if you can just figure out based on the information that's here on github how to run commands um, on your computer that's how you will then set up the application so you click on the application and then you open up your command prompt and then you'll get this something like this screen here which just says your user name uh, so it just shows my computer user charlie um, and then you want to copy paste that first line of not it's not code it's just a command um, into that that thing there um, and let's go back to that other page so that's what we see here so open command prompt so double click on XMR stack, open command prompt, type in the turtle coin miner. And then uh, if it asks you if you want to run as administrator, just click yes. And then that's all you need to do to basically download. Uh, you download the XMR stack and then you start running it on your command prompt um, by using that command that they give you here. Pretty simple. Uh, probably is like, you know, worse than French in term for most people. It's just something that's like completely like I've never done this before. So even just getting from where I've discussed, you know, looking at the GitHub things that you need to look at to this point um, is a challenge for a lot of people, to be honest. So it is something that is a little bit intimidating. Um, but if you just spend like half of a day um, looking at these links that I'm showing you and just kind of playing with this information and kind of jumping around, um, as long as you can troubleshoot and have common sense, uh, then you can get to this point um, and then start learning the basic commands that they tell you to put in. So good morning, Mr. Jackson. Nice to see you here. And also, uh, yeah, it's, you kind of start going to the matrix a little bit, which is why mining is interesting because you can start seeing the technicals behind Bitcoin, how it actually works. Um, and you can also learn a lot about how your computer works. Uh, probably more than you ever wanted to know. But um, as I said, this is only for people who are curious about, uh, you know, the under the hood, you're probably not going to make any money doing this, but you will at least get some coins. Um, 
And so then you want to check how to uh, set up Monero stack and configure it, which is just down here, uh, Monero stack setup and configuration. Um, so we already launched uh, the Monero stack um, by doing that command in the uh, command prompt. Um, and then the software will start to ask you questions. So I don't know if anybody's ever seen the movie, um, what was it called, War Games with uh, Matthew Broderick, uh, I think was the star in it or whatever. But he's this kid in his room, right? And he starts to try to hack into um, <laughs> the government's nuclear, uh, like whatever, nuclear silos, uh, computers and stuff like that. He accidentally gets into that somehow. But this is, you know, kind of what it feels like. So the computer starts like asking you questions or this application starts asking you questions. So it says like, do you want an HTTP interface? Um, basically you'll just see this here and then you don't need to worry about what it says. Just follow these instructions like exactly. So then you just enter zero and then uh, it'll start to talk about like, basically you just follow this uh, word for word. Um, just go down here and follow this information. And finally, step two, which then things start to get interesting and then it feels like a normal application, is um, basically it'll ask you here, um, which cryptocurrency do you want to mine? And if, if anybody can use this information and get to this point, uh, well done. It, it, took, it might take you a couple of hours to get to this point. Um, and then once you get to this point, then we're finally in business, okay? So that it gets a lot easier from here because before that it's a lot of like hopping through the web through GitHub to try to find um, you know how to start running the application, how to download it first, of course, then run it, and then how to uh, put in the basic commands to get to this point. Once you get to this point, then it lists all those coins that we talked about that you can mine with it. Um, the one that we're using as the example is Turtle Coin, um, and so then you just enter Turtle Coin. Uh, and then it will ask you for your pool address and your username uh, for your wallet. So what the hell is that? So we already know what wallets are, but what the hell is a pool address? So how mining works is if you just use your computer to mine this coin, it would take forever for you to solve one of the blocks uh, that's made uh, one of the blockchain one of the blocks in the blockchain that's made in order to receive your coins as a reward so instead of doing it all yourself you join a pool of people just a group of people who are all mining this coin and you combine your computing power together um, to mine it so um, that's what a pool is and then we also need a wallet right so if you just click these links here it'll tell you how to set up a wallet and how to find a pool so we want to uh, set up a wallet. So for Turtle Coin, if you just press like here, it goes to paper wallet. Okay, it loads a screen, setting up a paper wallet, blah, 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 blah. Um, eventually, um, you'll find that the uh, wallet for Turtle Coin is called the Z wallet, which is also just an application that you run on commands uh, through your command prompt. Um, and here, once you get that started uh, and downloaded, you'll start to see a screen like this, which means um, you basically download the application, you set up your wallet, and then you sync it to the blockchain. Um, so here you can see uh, in this picture that you have to actually wait for your wallet to uh, download the entire blockchain, which can take you know maybe like overnight. Um, so this is not a process that you're gonna do all in one day, it's maybe over the weekend. Um, so you sync your wallet um, and you just follow these directions exactly about how to install um, your wallet and how to save it uh, on your computer correctly and then how to use this Z wallet for TurtleCoin. And each of these communities will have their own um, uh, GitHub, so each one will have different names for these types of applications. Um, but here then eventually you will get to creating a wallet and you'll get the computer to ask you some questions like how, you know, do you want to create a wallet, restore a wallet? And then you actually, once you start seeing this part in your commands, then you'll actually be like, ah, okay, this is what my private keys are. This is what my seed, re seed restoration key is. This is what my public key is. And then you'll actually have an understanding of 
those things, which we've talked about in the past, but I think it's hard to kind of visualize as a concept. So you'll see here, as an example, here's your uh, public address um, for Turtle Wallet, right? It's something like this. It's just a alphanumeric code. Um, and then you also see how to view your private key and it'll give you all this information and you want to write it all down um, word for word. You get your uh, mnemonic seed, which is just 12 random words that represent your private key. Um, so you want to write all of this information down on a piece of paper um, so that you can access it if you lose, uh, if your computer like crashes or something someday, uh, like 10 years from now, and you want to open this wallet on a different computer, um, as long as you have uh, your you know, information on all of this stuff for your wallet, then you will be able to reopen that on any other computer in the future. So just making a wallet, you know, for a lot of these cryptocurrencies because they are, you know, still, you know, uh, not, you know, in terms of Bitcoin, they don't have applications that are as smooth to use. Um, you know, doing this, this is like what cryptocurrency used to be like back in 2010, 2011. So um, this is why, you know, Coinbase takes fees because um, creating this type of stuff by yourself uh, takes a long time. So you got your wallet created, let's say, um, and you open it and now you actually have a turtle coin wallet. Okay, now you have to choose a pool um, to combine your computing power for. So you want to choose a pool which is near your location because the servers will have uh, a shorter time to be able to talk to your computer. And so your computer will constantly be connected to the internet and communicating with these pools um, and basically you'll see here, like for example, uh, Funky Penguin New Zealand pool, you'll get a thousand turtle coin as a minimum payout. So if you mine for like a day or two, you'll probably then receive a thousand of these uh, turtle coins, um, which are similar in how they are to Monero with a few small differences, but they're worth like it's penny stock. So you're not going to make any money doing this, but you'll understand how this technology works. Um, so then jump back over here. Um, so you got your pool. Um, so you go back to that command. Um, you, after you chose turtle coin as the coin, then you input the pool address, then you input um, the wallet address, and then you make a password here, you just leave it empty. Um, and then from here, you just follow these this recipe um, all the way down here. Um, and then by the end of it, uh, you just run it and then you keep it running and then you are actually in business you are mining cryptocurrency um you know based on uh, monero um and that's it so i know it looks you know probably very confusing to a lot of people but also it looks very um you know pr probably intimidating this is what stopped me from getting into bitcoin in 2000 you know 11 12 because you know this is the way it used to be you used to have to jump through all of these hoops to actually um, be able to mine bitcoin and if you did you would mine bitcoin you know when it was at the price of like i don't know like 30 to 100 dollars uh and i think greg who was in the chat you know uh before um you know, he had mined one whole Bitcoin and then forgot about it and di didn't know where he put it, right? So um, who knows? Maybe some of these cryptocurrencies related on Monero could blow up in the future potentially. And then even though you just mined it for fun to understand Bitcoin, as long as you have your um, wallet, uh, you know, for passwords for your wallet still available, then um, you can you know, go back and get those funds. Maybe you have like a hundred thousand turtle coin or something like that after mining it for like uh, a week or a month or something like that. And then, uh, can you shut the door? And then if you have a thousand, like a hundred thousand turtle coin just sitting there, let's say someday it gets to like $1. Um, if it gets to a dollar, you have a hundred thousand dollars. I highly doubt that'll happen for that particular coin, but this is, you know, kind of uh, an in-depth, way to get it your to do a self education on what is blockchain what is cryptocurrency how did this stuff you know how does it created uh, how do you mine it and how you know what how does it work so if you really want to look under the hood and you want to understand how to do that um, look at those websites that i put uh, you can pause this video um, and just copy those web links um, at the top of my screen 
and throw those in. Um, and I'll just put this one in here. Uh, so this is the place to start. So these are the links that will be useful for you guys. If anyone wants to do this, I know Vincent Vale said he was interested in this. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing this show. Um, so there is where you can get Monero stack. And then um, here at hash vault pro, this is where you can uh, check out the different types of coins. For, uh, and then let's see if you want to do turtle coin in particular, um, you can go into their discord at the bottom of that, uh, link there, and you can actually start talking with the developers and the people who are in that chat, um, privately. And you can ask them, how do I start mining? Uh, how do I download Monero stack? You know, any question you have, um, even no matter how small it is, they'll help you for free. Um, and then, you know, for turtle coin in particular, um, if you start down this rabbit hole here, um, GitHub turtle coin, uh, wiki, um, just use those four links and then go down the rabbit hole, start playing with it within two days. Um, I would guess you'll probably have things up and running, um, as long as you don't have too many technical issues. But, um, like I said, those guys in the discord will answer all your questions. So ask them anything and everything and, um, you'll kind of be in touch with a new community. So good luck, Vincent. Uh, I think, you know, uh, it took me, you know, a weekend to figure this stuff out and then play with it. So uh, learning commands is not easy, but good luck. Um, let me know how it goes. Let us know how it goes. And if you're successful and you start mining either Turtle Coin or any of these other Crypto Knight coins, um, let us know if you're actually mining Monero, that'd be cool too. I think you'd have to go, uh, look for, you know, some communities, which will teach you how to do that on their discord, telegram or Slack. So yeah, please give that a try and see how it goes, but let us know. Anyways, uh, in terms of our channel, anybody who is new to this channel, um, can always take a look at my website, which is the last thing that I'll mention today. Uh, do, 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 do. So yeah, just go to cultivatecrypto.com, sign up for our newsletter there if you just happen to come upon this stream on YouTube and um, sign up for our newsletter to get more information and to talk to me about this type of stuff. So, um, oh good, Mr. Jackson. I didn't know you actually knew how to do command prompts. Um, so yeah, it's uh, simple. If you've done that with computers before, then you're way ahead of everybody else. Um, so if that's fun for you, um, then yeah, mining will probably be easy and going through these GitHubs to actually figure it out won't be that hard. So, uh, yeah, good luck. And uh, if you do that as well, uh, let us know. And then you maybe send us some screenshots of, uh, what it looks like when you receive your coins, uh, and stuff like that. So, um, for anybody who's going on to MLD's show, please enjoy. I'm sure he has something on the, uh, Notre Dame fire, uh, interesting information going up today. So that should be a fun show. Um, if you're on for the rest of your day, uh, then have a good rest of your day and talk to you tomorrow on the Tokyo Crypto Show. We are starting one hour later. That will be from 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the United States. Not on this platform, but just type in YouTube Tokyo Crypto Show and we'll be on MLD's platform. So see you tomorrow and uh, have a good day. Thank you very much.